All right, Nintendo Power Magazine issue number three from November, December 1988. Uh, this issue has the distinction of being the very first Nintendo Power that I ever owned. Uh, I think I might have got it from a friend or something like that. Um, so I have two copies of this now. Um, anyway, this particular uh, issue's got Track and Field 2, Blaster Master. Um, Track and Field 2 actually is the first uh, NES game I ever bought. Uh, I didn't have the Nintendo system when it first came out. I think I picked it up like in 1988. And I remember the very first game that I bought for it was this one. And it was pretty fun. Uh, made a lot easier if you had one of those turbo function controllers, especially when it came uh, to do the triple jump. Um, the archery in particular, I actually could get bullseyes every single time. Um, that's the only way I played this game is with a turbo function. Um, but it was pretty fun. I mean, it had a lot of, a lot of different things you could do in it. Um, yeah, there's a lot you could do with it. I sold my original Nintendo at a garage sale and all the games they had with it. Some of which were boxed and complete. Um, this goes back many, many years. I want to say... Uh, not long after I graduated college, my friend had a, a tag sale. I, I sold a lot of that stuff. Uh, one of the regrets from that whole deal was a nice, complete in-box copy of uh, Dragon Warrior 3. And I kept all my stuff in really good shape. So um, that commands a pretty penny nowadays on eBay, I think. All right, so like this kind of stuff I never really cared about, like the Mickey Mouse stuff through this and here's the uh feature on blaster master it was kind of a cool game i rented it i got you know, hardly anywhere into the game um from renting it for a day it was a pretty extensive game i don't think it had a password and i know i've talked about this in a prior episode but you know back then you basically just sat and played it until you finished it and sometimes that would take hours um Here's some merchandise that they had for sale. Let's take a look here. Well, this is the insert. So this is the poster, and then here's, I don't know where you could buy this stuff. Maybe direct from Nintendo. Lunch boxes and things like that. Some controllers. This thing was kind of silly. Yeah, so this was, this was the poster insert. And, uh, oh, this is where they're going to talk about role-playing games, which weren't very big here in the States um, at the time. They were in Japan. And so uh, Ultima, this was, I think, primarily a computer or PC game back in the day, and there were several versions of this. Um, but Dragon Warrior was, or Dragon Quest, was the first, first big RPG that I think picked up uh, or gained traction here in the States. So some of these early attempts, not so much. Here's Counselor's Corner, Metal Gear. Remember, my buddy had this. We played it over the course of three days and beat it. A few hours a day. Here are the people that would answer the phone, I guess, when you called the number. The Counselor Corner number. How do I defeat Willie and Double Dragon? Look at that haircut, man. A sign of the times for sure. <laughs> Classified information, always popular with the codes and whatever to get you those extra extra lives or jump around different stages. This is Gradius here, it looks like both pages. Mysterious Minus World in Super Mario Brothers. That was kind of a big deal back in the day. So this is the controller that I had. So my buddy had this one, and I didn't really like the joystick. So I had this one. And it had a sort of a cycloid, yeah, cycloid um, sort of uh, feel to it, I guess, uh, design, and had the turbo function button. So this game lent itself well to like ice hockey, or this controller lent itself well to like ice hockey and, and the track and field two games, maybe some other games. Not so much for platforming type or precision jumping type games. Um, 
And then here was its, uh, I guess, bigger brother, which is the joystick. And uh, this added the uh, slow motion function to it, which we took advantage of a, a lot uh, in Jackal when I played that uh, two-player mode with my buddy. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, all the slow motion mode was, in essence, was the start or pause button being hit repeatedly. Uh, but it was effective. It was coarse, but it was effective uh, back then and, and definitely made a difference and gave you time to like react to all the stuff that was going on on the screen at one time. Yeah, this doesn't interest me at all. So here's Blades of Steel. Very popular game from Konami. I didn't own this, but I remember borrowing it from a friend. And uh, one of the big deals was you could actually get in a fight, which is silly. It was... But a cool game nonetheless. Blades of Steel. Cobra Command. No familiar familiarity with this game. I never played this game. Racket Attack. I actually did rent this game back then. Uh, I do recall trying it out, which was great. I mean... I would never buy that game, but certainly renting it was, you know, no big deal. Uh, Tecmo Baseball, that was kind of cool. Uh, I rented that one as well. I still think RBI uh, was the best baseball game up to a point, and then it was Baseball Stars from SNK, where you could actually create teams and you could name the players. So you could kind of make, you know, Major League rosters uh, from, you know, from the, uh, the template, I guess, they gave you for the team. And... Here's Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl, when I first got my hands on this game, uh, one of my good friends came over after school, and literally we played it from like 3.30 to like 9, 9.30 at night, just straight through. I mean, it was crazy. That's how addicting this game was. And then Tecmo Super Bowl, Tecmo Super Bowl was the second one, and that was way better because it had all the teams and had all the players. Um, and that was a major hit. In my uh, college floor, my dorm, uh, first floor of my dorm, freshman year. Skater Dad was kind of cool. So these are like upcoming games, and then Captain Nintendo. I don't know what this is, story or something. Giveaways, and um, yeah, it's just prizes for some giveaways. NES Journal. Jane Leto made an appearance here in Celebrity Profile. Apparently he was a gamer. And then Mailbox Video Spotlight Power Player Profile. Basically, yeah, I'm awesome. I beat this game, I beat that game, blah, 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 blah. And then a picture of yourself, get it in Nintendo Power. And then the top 30, which looks like it changed a little bit. Metal Gear. This, I think the Red Man was brand new. Something like that, or as a big mover. So uh, here's what the uh, top 10, and then here's the rest of it over here. Top 30. And uh, that's it. So uh, next issue is Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. A big feature on that. Nintendo Power, issue number three. Thanks for watching.